You know, I'm walking down this lot and I'm seeing a whole pile of inventory just piling up. This entire lot is filling up at an alarming rate. But what does that mean? Well, one of two things, either number one, the allocations are rolling in for 25, which is partially the case. Number two, the cost of these vehicles continues to rise. These trucks, these SUVs, prices just don't seem to be letting up anytime soon. They keep going up 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 when does this madness end we know that inflation is going to play a part in every one of these vehicles it always has it always will inflationary rates just keep on going two three percent year over year but what we're seeing is a lot of these car markets these trucks we're looking at fords here but gm and ram specifically are even worse a lot of these vehicles are piling up because people are finally running out of money and while yes people are buying them and ford's still selling vehicles and you're seeing they're hitting some of their record numbers and they're still selling at what they consider a pretty solid rate the fact remains is these prices keep going up so who's to actually blame is it the oems the sellers the dealers well, the dealers just put up two points, three points. They put a percentage over top the price of each one of their vehicles that they want to sell. But they're sort of restricted there a little bit. The, D, the OEMs, on the other hand, the factory, has sort of some numbers that they set the tone. They set the MSRP. They set the sticker price. And so that's the fundamental baseline. But if buyers are okay in paying these prices, do you think maybe they have a part to do with this? I mean, well, you're always going to have high prices on vehicles like this. I mean, look at... This Harley Davidson edition here. I definitely like this. Some of these logos and decals. Oh, this one looks like it maybe got hurt there on the truck. But this is a Harley Davidson, as you can see right here. Big, bold step guards there. Of course, you get the big wheels and they've got the Harley logo. I definitely like the looks of that. You've got the painted fender flares. Beautiful. Obviously, lots of great touches here. But I bet you these trucks don't come cheap. I mean, with a big lift kit like this, Harley Davidson, it's going to be a pricey little unit. But not everybody has $160,000, $180,000 to spend on that. I mean, what about something a little bit more garden variety, something that most people actually need for work or drive their kids to school, and this is the problem. Those are the everyday vehicles that people don't have a choice in. I mean, yes, they have a choice whether they want to buy that $880,000 truck, but they don't really have a choice of just using a basic mode of transportation. And while we're looking a lot of here, we have XLTs, XLs, we have ST STXs, we have all kinds of models. Oh, what here? This one here is a Raptor. As we can see, absolutely beautiful truck. And as we can see, well, it has a lot of great touches on it. You know, looking over there, you get the slider on the back, big wheels. Of course, nice. You've got the big step guards right there. And we have a sticker on here. And this one here is a 2024. So it's been sitting here for a while. And it goes for $111,000. $111,000. How many trips to Mexico can I do with $111,000? How many mortgage payments can I save myself by using that on that instead? How many times can I put little Johnny in camp how many small cars can I buy for the price of that 111,000? Those are all great questions. People are starting to look at these high prices and saying, look, let this stuff rot. These vehicles are getting too expensive, way too expensive. And even some garden variety vehicles are often too expensive now. And Ford is one of the highest priced vehicles in this segment for the light duty trucks and the F-150s, even though they've been selling, it's their popularity that seems to be carrying them along. Okay, then you say, okay, what about a dually? Maybe I want to tow my boat or RV or something. I want to get something a little bit, you know, for everyday use, XLT. This is going to be a heavy duty truck. Obviously, uh, if I can squeeze in here. What do we got here? We have a hundred and, we got a hundred thousand dollars on that one. A hundred grand, 550 bucks for a dually diesel. Now that's clearly a significant amount of money. And for anybody looking to do a little bit of work, which that seems to be not a fleet vehicle, but it's something that you would do for work, that's a real deep reach into your pocket. Oh, and look over here, we have a whole lineup of new trucks. Here we have, this is FX4, F-150 XLT, but scroll around here and look, we have a few of these more affordable vehicles. Now these, these little Mavericks were designed to fill a gap that people couldn't afford these full-size pickup trucks anymore. Those F-150s, the F-series trucks were becoming too unaffordable for a lot of people. 
And a lot of people are saying, ah, let them rot. I can't afford it anyway, who cares? And that's been the general consensus. While some people are buying them, there's many others that are just saying, forget it, let it rot, I don't have the money. But here was Ford's answer. Here we have an XLT, and this is a Maverick, very basic. Of course, this isn't, you know, obviously painted here. Lots of plastic trim. We do have a plastic liner in here. And look, there's no slider at the back on this one. We do have, you know, a very basic looking vehicle. There's nothing really too showy going on here. This does come with the all wheel drive and you've got a receiver here. Uh, very basic. I mean, look at this very basic. Lots of plastic, lots of simplicity, which is fine. But you're now paying the kind of money for one of these little basic trucks. It's not even really a truck. Some people say if you can't put a full sheet of flywood or drywall in the back here, then it's not a full truck, right? Here we have a Maverick, and this one here is a 2024 XLT all-wheel drive, two liter EcoBoost. We have a pile of options here, so it's kind of a mid-spec. Obviously, it doesn't have leather, it doesn't have sunroof, it doesn't have a lot of the features. It's kind of a mid-level, and it's going for $43,000. So now, I just remember a few short years ago where I can get myself a full-size F-Series truck like this for $40,000, $45,000. It wasn't very long ago, and now we're having to settle for these pint-size pickup trucks, but they've been popular for Ford. Ford's been doing well, they've been selling a lot of these, and this is filling the gap for people that can no longer afford the full-size trucks. Now you also have the Ranger. The Ranger is also one that was supposed to fill a gap, but quite honestly is quite pricey on its own right. And then let's check out the difference here. We have a Maverick that clearly is going to be an upscale. This looks like a Lariat. I can see up here at the front it says Lariat. So this is going to be probably one of the top spec vehicles. They are giving you a rear slider, but honestly, I mean, look at my hand. I'm not sure how big of a slider, what you're even going to do with that. That's really more of like blowing through a straw. It's kind of small. It's there, I guess it's, it serves a purpose, but it's quite tiny. Here you do get a spray and liner. You do get some plugins right here. Look at that, you get an electrical outlet. So there's an inverter on board. Nice tie downs everywhere. You get this extra rack here for extra tie downs. More D-rings at the back there. But again, many people say, if you can't fit a four by eight sheet of plywood in there, there's no point. This is a Ford. I like the new bl uh, black decal on there. And they give you some cutesy wheels painted handles versus over here you'll see the xlt not painted painted so quite a difference i mean that nice little detail as we look back here we can compare some of the others of course the mirrors are pretty much the same everything else is the same this is the lariat as i mentioned already but scaling back at the front honestly not a whole lot difference if we're being honest i mean the grill looks pretty much the same other than you get this i mean this different style of led versus that that's not quite the same type light there, but the bottom sections, both plastic, hard plastic. The grill is slightly different here. You get this radar. Obviously you got this radar ACC here. So there's a couple of safety features this one has that this one doesn't. And obviously looking around here, this one does give you leather interior. This one does give you cloth. So how much does this top trim, even with the sunroof on top, how much does this top trim Maverick this is a 24, also has the same two liter EcoBoost engine. So really you're paying for a couple of extra painted pieces and a little bit of extra safety technology. Honestly, that rear slider is kind of funny, but it's $50,670, 51 grand. You're $55,000 out the door for this. So we're at a point now where now you're, you can't even afford, a lot of people can't even afford to buy even the entry level makeup space the the spec the base spec type vehicle for trucks for ford and yes it's expensive everywhere i've compared toyotas and hondas and nissans and everything has gone up but these are clear indications that while well, they're trying to fill a market space or market gap there's a lot of people that still don't have that kind of money and yes there's always going to be the haves and haves nots but they're just creating a bigger gap and there's going to be a lot more have nots than there was. And, I mean, at the end of the day, the F-150 was America's best selling truck for a long time for good reason. Almost everybody could afford to buy one. A good working person putting in 40 hours a week could easily buy, you know, the house, the dog, the white picket fence, and a car or a truck. In this case, an F-150 was that family vehicle, but it feels like it's becoming more of a luxury item, even to get your hands on one of these garden variety F-150s. Now, recently we've heard that the CEO and CFO of Ford have taken a trip to China to sample out some of the electric vehicles. And they said, openly admitted, that the Chinese vehicles are far ahead of what we're doing here in North America. Nonetheless, 
the Ford brands, GM, Chevy, of course, we've seen advancements and they've been proving on sales. Chevy GM have sold more electric vehicles recently. They've seen about a 3% increase here in this last stretch in the last quarter of the sales of some of their EVs. Things are working. But Ford is clearly still trying to be competitive because what they're having to do is mark down. So for 2025, it looks like they're, they're readjusting their sticker price of the F-150 Lightnings in most trim levels. Particularly the lower trim levels, they're actually jacking up but the higher trim levels they're really cutting major slashing major prices off the top so what they're doing is trying to become more competitive with gm and it's a constant back and forth mouse and cat game they're trying to maintain market share but what they're really trying to do is just keep a product in the market they're trying to be competitive and they realize that the hybrid versions of the maverick are actually the vehicles that a lot of people are gravitating to so they're realizing putting more effort into their hybrid vehicles and less into pure EVs means that they're in a better place for success or long-term sustainability because we all know ICE is being pushed out the door. So it doesn't appear to be a lot of relief anytime soon for GM Ram, they're all jacking up their prices and more indications we're seeing Ram even pull some of their more base trim vehicles. Of course, we know the Ram Classic went bye-bye this fall and they're shutting planning on closing down the plant. But we're hearing price increases on almost every model lineup within the Ford lineup and we're seeing it in GM, we're seeing it in Chevy, small incremental changes so you don't feel the burn. It's the old frog in the hot water, right? If you put him in cold water, turn it up, he'll cook, he'll never even notice the difference. But if you drop his feet in boiling water, he'll know and he'll try to get away. That's what's going on here and that's what it feels. The slow incremental price increase we're seeing across the board, trucks, cars, SUVs, they're all going up in price. And Ford seems to be right in the middle of the mix of this and customers are just saying, I've had enough. What do you say? Well, I've heard a lot of people say, let it rot. A lot of these prices of these vehicles, these trucks and SUVs are simply way too high. And they're saying, just let them have them. We want no part of it. We don't want a part of a Ram 1500 classic like this. This is the outgoing model with the 5.7 Hemi. This is going away. You won't see this for much longer. And of course, these are the type of vehicles that fit the bill for many people, just trying to do a little bit of work and keep the price down. This is a price point truck, but unfortunately it's no longer going to be available. Anyway, I'd love to hear from each and every one of you. What are your thoughts? Do you think the price of these trucks are so high? Just let it rot. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hope to see each and every one of you in the next one. See you real soon. Bye-bye.